Hi everyone, Mike here with the Aquaponics Source. I'm in Olean, New York at Cataragus Algeni Bosi School. It's a vocational school and we are just wrapping up an install that we did inside of a repurposed building on their campus. Because they're a vocational school, they're going to be able to intersect all the different subjects and disciplines that they teach inside of the classroom and integrate it with uh, aquaponics. So things like the art, the culinary department, engineering, electrical, everyone's going to have a chance to put their hands on this system. So come on inside, I'll give you a tour. you'll see as you walk in is this independent quarantine and purge tank. It's a 200 gallon fish tank connected to an Endurance 2000 bead filter. This would be a good holding tank for incoming fish and quarantine them before we integrate them into the main system as well as uh, taking them out of the main system and putting them in here for harvesting or for monitoring if we uh, suspect a fish might be sick. This is a really good separate isolated tank from the rest of the system. Right behind me is our Flourish Fish Farm 600. We have two 300 gallon fish tanks. We have the windows installed. And this is gonna be where we're holding our fish. Uh, this, the number of fish can vary depending on the purpose of the, the fish, the species of fish. I believe they're gonna stock koi, catfish, and tilapia. So those are gonna live very comfortably uh, inside of these two tanks. Working our way down. We have the Endurance 4000 B filter, and this is going to be where all the fish solids and all the waste that gets uh, drained from the fish tanks will come into here, and these rice-sized beads will uh, churn inside uh, powered by an air pump, and that's going to be where the solids get removed from the water. It's also going to be where the bacteria colonize uh, on the rice pellets and then convert the fish waste into plant-safe and fish-safe fertilizer. Right here is our fish sump or fish reservoir. It's basically where the water from the fish tank uh, hangs out before going into our filter. We have this connected to a small boy water filter. So uh, whenever the water level inside of the sump tank gets too low, we have it connected to a float valve inside of the tank that will automatically top off the water. That way you don't have to be uh, manually bringing in buckets every day to top off the water. The small boy and the float valve do the work for you. Right here is our plant sump, and uh, we run our systems, uh, and we give our systems the opportunity to be either coupled or decoupled. What that means is that when they're coupled, all the water is exchanged in the even flow between the plant system and the fish system. But if we wanted to decouple it, uh, we would have the plant, the fish system running independently, and then the plant system running independently, and then we could top off the water in the plant sump using our aquaponic water. Right here is a really cool device. This is our Hydros monitoring and controller. So all, we have all these different probes that are going into the sump tank. For example, here's a thermostat and it lets me know what the water temperature is. We have a pH probe, we have a water level sensor, we even have a solenoid valve controlling the flow of water from our small boy through the float valve. What's great about this is everything is fed to a free app on your phone. So you can, and you can also share it with as many people as you want and limit the range of access that each user gets. So students could have a view only access and then the teachers, farm managers could have full access and they can set timers and rules and safe ranges. All right, and coming on down here, we have our third tank. This is our mineralization tank, which is gonna be where when we drain sludge from the endurance feed filter, uh, we're gonna take those solids in that sludge dump it in here, we're aerating it, we're further breaking down those fish solids and we're extracting further nutrients and then we can drain solid free water, put it on our crops outside or even uh, re-add it back into our aquaponic system for more nutrients. These are five aquabundance uh, grow beds filled with clay media. This is going to be where they can plant their peppers, their beans, their tomatoes, their squash, melons, cucumbers, strawberries. And right beside me we have two deep water culture beds. 
This one is a 4 by 24, and that one is 6 feet by 32 feet. And this is going to be where your leafy greens are going to be growing. Lettuce, kale, rosemary, thyme, oregano, parsley. All that grows in here. And the beauty of growing in deep water culture is that you can transplant your seedlings on one end, harvest on the other end. If I'm harvesting here, I would take this raft board out. Someone on the other end is going to push the next, uh, the next raft board down. And then in a week or so, we harvest this plant and you continue that assembly line of wrap work. And because we're in an indoor grow space, grow lighting is very important for plant production. Right above me on both deep water culture troughs, we have a 300 watt Thrive Apex light. These will be controlled on a timer. Again, automation for the farmer. They don't have to come in every day and turn on and off their grow lights. Right over our clay media beds, we have two ARC 600 grow lights. These are LEDs as well, 600 watts. And what we actually have them connected to is a robotic light rail mover. You can see we have five grow beds, but only two grow lights. And that's because with the power of these lights, we're able to share the light between the beds, reducing the number of lights that we need. So thanks for coming along on this brief tour with us inside of this awesome new uh, forest farm. Uh, we're super excited for this program. We're really excited to see how the students are able to get involved. All these inter interdisciplinary uh, contributions from the different subjects, and just everyone working together. This is definitely going to be a farm that we'll be checking in on, and we'll be